everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Hidden Gems Podcast. And this is a show where we like to dive into a streaming service and to tell you about some hidden gems that you can find on that service. It's really fun. We love doing it every Friday. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and, and Ryan is here. Hey, Rachel. It's great to be back with you once again. Uh, my emotions are like riding high right now. I mean, Doctor Strange was awesome. The Avatar 2 trailer was awesome. <laughs> Like I'm coming out to see you in a month, like at a, like a month as of the day of this recording, less than when it eventually goes out. But uh, I'm turning 25 on Saturday. I mean, it just I'm just all over the place. Yeah, that's so exciting. 25. That's a big, big year. <clears throat> big year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it's. Uh, I've had some time to think about it, and I'm just. I'm so grateful to be just. I, I'm just so grateful to have made it this far and I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to another 25. My 25th birthday was the year after I was back from my mission. So that was a, a very interesting year for me. And it was a lot of change, but uh, it feels like a million years ago <laughs> I know, to me. <laughs> I forget if I ever asked you, but where did, where did you go for your mission? I went to Indiana yeah. Oh, that's Who's right. I did. I did ask you. <laughs> yeah, I, I served all over the whole state uh, over the course of almost two years. So it was pretty, it was pretty great. But, uh, but yeah, I, I was a little bit older than some of the other girls that go out. Uh, and so I went when I was 22 and a half. Um, usually now they go out at 20. When I was there, they were going out at 21. So I waited a year and a half longer and I had finished college and uh, so I took 23 and 24 on my mission. So that's why a lot of movies from uh, 2003 and 2004, I'm like not caught up on still to this day. <laughs> yeah, definite blind spot because you yeah. were doing the Lord's work, literally. All right. <laughs> so yeah, but then, uh, you know, uh, 20 uh 25 when i turned 25 that was that was a big year definitely definitely a big year so but i'm sure it'll be a big one for you uh yeah on the actual day itself i actually have to work it's a, a fundraiser it's one of our big fundraisers for the year being a non for profit you know sometimes you got to throw fundraising events like that for fundraising but right. it's actually fun it's called the family fun fest we're doing like face painting and we're having games and we got a catering company to donate a crap ton of ice cream for us and a bunch of churches are baking cookies so we're going to be serving yeah. all that and so it, it's going to be a great time we've already put raised. the uh, put the fun in fundraiser yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, exactly that that's exactly what it is and so yeah it's it's a little sad to be working on my birthday, but it's not an all day thing, and I've got a laser concert to go to after um after that. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a busy day, but it's gonna be a fun day also. Cool, good. Now well, I'm glad. Wish you a happy birthday. I think this you said it's on Friday. Uh, Saturday. So oh, okay. okay. This will go out the thirteenth. So then right. it will be the fourteenth. And also, cool. happy birthday to George Lucas. We share a birthday. Oh. Look at that. Very good. Cool. Well, why don't you tell everybody what we are focusing this week on for Hidden Gems? Uh, well, since last week we did Canopy, it's a library service, we decided to go to the other uh, library service for movies and TV called Hoopla. This is our sixth episode of Hoopla, and I'm not going to lie, I did not think we would get six episodes of this service, but it really does show just how versatile it can be be at least yeah. from what I've been able to see there's a lot and and especially if you are in the tv movie fandom like I am there's so many uh Lifetime and Hallmark and and those kinds of movies on here so uh, it's a good resource for that yeah absolutely it, it's it's just popular with masterpiece the the, the PBS masterpiece yeah yeah that too a mm-hmm. lot of BBC shows, like stuff I'd never even heard of starring pretty famous people. Like Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch is in this show called Patrick Melrose, which 
sounds fascinating. And then there's a bunch of other ones. There's this one called Father Brown, which my dad is watching. And he's, oh, I've heard of that. He seemed to be really, um, he seemed to be really into it. And I, he kind of wants me to check it out for. Is that my a comedy family. show? It's a mystery with like a dash. Of oh, okay. From what I read. Okay. And so, yeah, if you're definitely into like British TV, then this is like the place for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a good resource. It really is. Plus, they have uh, audiobooks as well that you can get on and music on uh, Hoopla. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, audiobooks, regular books, or ebooks. Uh, uh, all the comics that I've read have pretty much come from Hoopla. They literally have such an extensive library. You could literally type in, like, say, Superman, for example, and you can get Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, modern stuff, like, yeah. like everything in between. And that's our favorite price, three ninety nine. Yeah, just with a library card. And yeah, free. It's really good. And so I'm excited about my five choices. They're really good ones, I think. But why don't you start us off? Tell us what your first pick. So my first choice is a movie from 2008. And I was wondering if I had ever recommended this one before. And I was also wondering at the same time if I was kind of tightrope walking because it's from a very famous director, David Fincher, and has two very famous people starring in it, Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. But I figured I'd talk about it anyway. It's the curious case of Benjamin Button. Uh, it tells the story of, well, a man named Benjamin Button who ages in reverse. He is born a pretty much an old man. And as he gets older in numbers, he gets younger in appearance, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I saw this, uh, when I saw this with my parents, like in the theater, I was a little confused. It was like, wait, so is he older now or yuck? I don't know. But it's, over the years, I've grown to appreciate the movie a little more. It's a very good story about more about mortality and understanding that you only have so much time left on this earth, so you should do everything that you can to do everything that you can, for lack of a better term. Uh, Brad Pitt, I mean, he's really good in pretty much everything that he's in, and I think this is one of my favorite performances of his. Kate Blanchett, has never done really a bad performance in her in her career that I've seen personally. I mean, I unless I'm forgetting some pretty pretty I big. I think her worst is probably Indy Four. Uh, ah, best as a Russian lady. I think she did have some pretty chilling moments, but the accent was a bit much. I will say. <laughs> the point I'm trying to get at is yeah, she's great. There's I no really, question. really do enjoy the acting. I like the message. I like the story. The effects I think were real were really well done. It was primarily CG from what I've read, but I think the CG was handled very well. I thought it was a surprisingly heartwarming story from Fincher, who is not exactly the brightest. Like is is not exactly a bright ray of sunshine when it comes to to the movies he makes. I think this is one of his more positive ones, at least from what I've seen. Yeah. But I recommend everyone check it out. He does kind of feel like an odd pick for Fincher. <laughs> you know, he's usually yeah, more cynical than this movie. Because, you know, I mean, like, Seven, what's in the box? What's in the box? Like, Zodiac, they don't find the Zodiac killer. You yeah. Know, Gone Girl. Mank is just about this drunk guy. <laughs> The yeah. time <laughs> gone girl i mean that's a whole bunch of sadness right there right. No, one, no one comes out of that looking good so yeah, yeah. He's, fincher makes very dark movies but this is surprisingly and there's some dark stuff in here let's not get that twisted but it's kind of like forrest gump if it had a bit more of an edge if i had to describe this movie at all i think that's a pretty good description actually i think that's good uh well I, uh, my net, my first pick is a hard left, as you like to say, <laughs> David Fincher. Um, I said that there's a lot of Hallmark movies on Hoopla, and that's true. And so one that I wanted to talk about is called Love Takes Flight. 
very cute movie. It's got Nikki DeLoach, who's one of my favorites of the Hallmark uh, leading ladies. We've had her on our podcast multiple times. She's great. And she plays a busy, busy doctor who uh, has a hard time uh, uh, balancing her life. She's got this little girl who's adorable. Uh, the little girl becomes friends with this old man uh, and then they become friends and uh, and then she starts to get to know his son who's this sort of brash pilot <laughs> and it's just it's fun and then her mother is played by Barbara Niven who's great and so yeah I uh, I like this one I think it's nice yeah, I was um, I was trying to remember because Barbara Niven is a name that sounds familiar. I was just looking her up, and it sounds like she's just been in a lot of stuff. From what yeah, I she's great. Uh, we've had her on the podcast a number of times as well. Um, she's on all the Murder She Baked uh, movies, and so that's fun. She's also on uh, the Christmas and Evergreen movies, and so she's. She's just done a lot for Hallmark. She's on Chesapeake Shores, but I don't like that show. So we don't talk about it much. <laughs> also, let's talk about how great a title that is. Murder She Baked. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm just That's hungry right. just from, <laughs> from the sound of that. Yeah. I actually haven't seen uh, any, I haven't seen the Murder She Baked because they came along before I started uh, Hallmark's podcast. But, uh, but I need so one I need to catch up with eventually, but they're big fan favorite for sure. But wait. Robin Hood is great. Nicola Tulloch is great. It's just a sweet little movie. Wait, there are Hallmark movies you haven't seen? <laughs> yeah, in, in what universe am I living in? <laughs> I wasn't that big a fan of the mysteries before I started the podcast. I actually didn't even want to cover them at first but we did end up covering them and so i still haven't i still haven't caught up on some of the mysteries <laughs> but uh pre 2017 it's a little more sketchy there's some i haven't seen uh when we started the podcast in 2017 i've pretty much seen everything since then but uh but what do you have next so my next choice this is a very sentimental choice uh, this is a comedy special from 2016. It's called Bill Engvall, Just Sell Him for Parts. Uh, Bill Engvall is one of my favorite comedians. Uh, he's, uh, I started listening to him because he was a part of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour with Jeff Foxworthy, Ron White, and Larry the Cable Guy. I was a big Larry the Cable Guy fan, and so that kind of grandfathered me in into becoming a fan of the rest of the three. But Bill Engvall is one of the ones that I actually listen to all of his albums. And, and he actually is retiring this year, which makes me very sad. But at the same time, I mean, the man has done very well for himself in the comedy world. So, I mean, that's all well and good. And this looks like it's his last special. And it's, I think this is just really funny. There's some great there's some great stories of his because he was on Dancing with the Stars. I can't remember which season it was, but he has some great stories of how he he tore his groin and then he tore his ACL. And so he was like the walking wounded going into the finals and he was begging to be off the show. And he was like, please, God, just let me get eliminated. And, it, and he, he was drawing out the Bill and Emma you are safe. And he's like, ah, oh, God, I'm still in. Like, it's funnier when I'm going to say, does. he did really good. I remember, because I used to watch Dancing with the Stars. So he's got a great story there. And <laughs> he's got another great story when he, he tries medical marijuana for the first time. And honestly, honestly, I can't quote, really quote anything of it. It just, it's just fantastic. But it, it's one of those things where, if you're into like more raunchy comedians and this is really going to do nothing for you, Bill Engvall's very clean for the most part, especially as he's gotten older. But this, I still think this is just hysterically funny and I recommend everyone check it out. Cool. Yeah. I always like a good comedy, uh, comedy special. Uh, my next pick, I have a couple that I picked this time. There are borderline hidden gems uh, my next pick is technically a academy best picture nominee so 
it's probably not a hidden gem, but I, I don't feel like you just talked about that much. It's Lion, which I loved. And it, I was so happy that it got nominated in 2016. It's a true story. Deb Patel, he p- plays this man who, when he was a little boy in India, he fell asleep on the train and got lost and couldn't find his way back to his family. So he ends up getting adopted by a family in Australia. And through basically Google search, he's able to find the town where he grew up and find, retrace all of his steps and figure it out and uh, through Google Earth. Uh, and, uh, and so then he meets his, his birth mother and it's really good. I love it. And uh, Nicole Kidman, she's great as this adoptive mom. Uh, and uh, the, the only weakness is maybe the romance with Rooney Mara is, but it's not, doesn't spend that much time on it. And I just, I love it. It's such a moving, wonderful story. Well acted, well shot, well done. Um, so some people call to Oscar bait. I disagree. Dang, what a way to get lost. Falling asleep on a train and realizing that you're like somewhere else entirely and your family's just nowhere near you that's got to be just the scariest thing ever yeah and they capture it really well the little kids are so good yeah i remember this coming to my local theater and i was thinking because at my local theater we get like operas and like tcm big screen classics and others other events so smaller independent movies or i guess this would be an independent movie i'm not sure but Smaller movies tend to fall under the radar, but we actually ended up getting Lion, and I did never see it, but I, but this was around the time I started working at the theater, so I remember seeing the end credits quite a bit, and it was a song from uh, Sia, it's like something unstoppable, and it's like, that's a good song. Though. Yeah. It. It is. It's a good song, good music. It's just a really moving story. It's the kind of story that you like to see get get Oscar nominations and things like that because usually they tend to be a bit more on the cynical side. I mean, it's kind of similar to something like Coda. Uh, so I, I, I think I actually like this better than Coda. Uh, but uh, it's a really good movie, so people should check it out. So what's your next pick? So my next choice is a movie from, well, ironically enough, 2008. I didn't plan it, but that's just how it went. Uh, And it's called Fly Boys. Uh, This tells the story of the first fighter pilots in American or in American war military history. They fought during World War I and they basically tag teamed with British and French pilots to take out the Germans who were dominating the skies, uh, specifically with the Red Baron. And this isn't like the greatest military movie of all time, but I do actually quite enjoy this. I like the story. I'm a big history buff, so this speaks to me on that level too. Uh, James Franco's in it, and he actually gives a pretty good performance. I this is this is like my kind of period piece, and I like like other period pieces like Down Navy and like and and Pride and Prejudice, and I'm working up to it and other things. But this is like I love like World War One and World War Two type stuff. That's why I love 1917 so much. I mean, it's a technically amazing movie, but also because it's World War One, and I just am fascinated by that. It's like. Fly Boys, 1917, uh, They Shall Not Grow Old. Like, I could go on. So I, d- I give a recommendation to this. Well, I heard of this, so it's new to me. Uh, it sounds interesting. But I, I, I'm also fascinated by World War One because I think it was seems like such an unnecessary war, so I think it makes it a little more interesting. Yeah, I was, actually, I was actually watching... Too. I was actually watching the oversimplified video. Are you aware of the channel on oversimplified with the little, oh, I'll send you the videos later. They're great. Uh, Specifically about World War II and uh, Prohibition. They're my favorites. But but the, the guy who runs the channel uses these little, like, not stick figures, but I guess technically they would be stick figures. 
to basically explain, a, will over, oversimplify a lot of the events in like World War II, Prohibition, Cold War, so on. And he did an episode on World War I. And even though I knew like the causes of World War I, he did a surprisingly good job of explaining the whole thing about leading up to Archduke Ferdinand and his assassination, basically the lead up to the war, and then he got into the actual war itself. And and honestly, I think it's very well done. So I'll send you a couple of those videos there. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Uh, I Even something like Wonder Woman, I actually, I like. I mean, that world. is a World War I movie, so yeah. we might as well call it what it is. Oh, yeah, I think it's interesting. It's just an interesting setting for a movie, I think. Uh, well, my next pick is a borderline hidden gems, beloved by a lot of people, but oh well. I'm going with 13 going on 30. <laughs> and this uh, was from 2004. And uh, it's where Jenna uh, goes into the uh, seven minutes of heaven with her friend who she takes, uh, she's friend zoned, which is 13. She thinks it'd be so much better to be 30. And she wakes up and she is 30 as Jennifer Garner and <laughs> trying to figure everything out. It's basically a you know, girl version, a big. Uh, but uh, but I really like it. I think it's really charming. I think that Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo have super good chemistry. Uh, I I think that she does feel like a 13 year old in a 30 year old body, uh, kind of with the things she thinks will be cool and the things that she she get messes up on feel real to me. It's so fun when she does like the thriller dance and. Uh, uh, you've got Judy Greer and Andy Serkis in this. So it's, it's got a really fun cast. And uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a fan of Jennifer Garner. I think she's a pretty good actress. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Alias, but she's really good in there. Oh, yeah. I loved her in Juno. I, like, oh. like she, she, her character got like, she got like, she got the shaft in that with the whole Jason. Uh, I'm forgetting my Jason. Is it well, Jason? Jason Bateman at the, Bateman. the beginning, but then she ends up winning in the end. Yeah, that is true. That, because that he's was such a loser. And, and Juno, real, or like her character is so important to Juno's whole arc because she judges, she thinks that Jason Bateman's character is so cool to begin with. And then by the end, uh, she realizes that no, the Jennifer Garner's actually the 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 cool one that is the is the good one, and she still gives her the baby and uh, or places her, the baby uh, with Jennifer Garner. And uh, yeah, I mean Juno is absolutely one of my favorite movies. I love it. So, yeah. Yes, I do as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, and Thirty Going Thirty. Have you ever seen it? It's it's a good one. I think I actually it. haven't, but I've. Mm -hmm. been but I actually like this premise of like as someone young getting to someone old and be like, Oh, it's not as cracked up as you think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what's your next pick? So my next choice is a limited TV series from the history channel. It's called the men who built America. Uh, this tells the story of a lot of five dudes who really like, like paved the way in like the industrial revolution for a lot of things that we take grant for granted nowadays. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, uh, J.P. Morgan, and uh, and a couple of others. I'm blanking on the last two, but ba basically, coming out of the Civil War, the U.S. was in a pretty bad spot, but at but in the Industrial Revolution kicked on and these guys were at the forefront of it. It's a really fascinating show. I, like I said, I'm a big history buff. And so this came out at around the time where it was like at pretty much my peak. And so I, and it was also my peak history channel viewing as well. I was watching like Pawn Stars and Counting Cars and American Restoration and Top Shot and Vikings. Like it was around that time. I should say up front that, that Trump is in it as a talking head. So if 
you're still triggered by his presence, then just be prepared. He's not in the show for very long, though. And he literally is like a, like a talking head. He didn't produce it or any of the sort. He's just there to chime in a couple things, specifically in the J.P. Morgan stuff. But the rest of the show is very well done. It's actually with actors playing the various people. Like, I actually like specifically the actors they got to play Vanderbilt and Carnegie. Those two were my favorites. And, uh, and like I said, it's very much a History Channel series, so take it with a grain of salt, but I really enjoyed this. Yeah, they loved having Trump in those street specials there for a not while. Anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. No, that's true. Yeah, it, it, this this show came out in, I think, 2013. And mm-hmm. I had no idea yeah. of everything that would happen after that. But I was just like, Nobody oh, did. I think that's the dude from The Apprentice. <laughs> Nothing <Yeah>. else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love those kinds of things, those kinds of history shows. I think they're really interesting. Uh, so that sounds that sounds like a good one. Yeah, especially so. considering that they created a lot of stuff that we take for granted nowadays. Like basically, Andrew Carnegie, like he took over the steel industry, and we use steel in pretty much everything nowadays. So that was the first guy who was like all right, let's use this. And this was in like the 1920s and 30s before World War II. So it's fascinating stuff. Cool. Well, my next pick is an indie darling from last year that I enjoyed. Uh, it, it's one of those creative artsy kind of movies that uh, I, some people won't like, but I, it worked for me. It's called Violet. It's directed by Justine Bateman, the sister of, just, of, uh, of Jason Bateman uh, that we were just talking about. Uh, and uh, it's, about this, she, it's about this, Olivia Munn plays this woman named Violet. And uh, she works for this like production, film production company. And she's always let herself just get pushed around by everybody around her. Her boss is terrible. And uh, she, she just doesn't have any, any gumption. Well, one day she starts hearing a voice in her head telling her to be brave, telling her what to do. And it's uh, Justin Thoreau. So this is a very attractive voice out of your head. <laughs> uh, um, but like there's this guy, Luke Bracey, played by Luke Bracey, that she's been wanting to, she's had a crush on. Um, so she has the courage with that and the courage to make sure he treats her well. And uh, so there's that. Plus her, she has courage with her job. She has courage. There's just all different things in her life. And I really enjoyed it. And not only do you see not only do you hear his voice, but you also see what she's thinking written out. And sometimes there'll be like images, like there'll be like an atomic explosion or something like that going on inside her head. So it's, it's again, it's very creative. It's very artistic. Uh, but I, I thought it, it was a creativity that spoke to me and worked for me. And I, I liked it a lot. So uh, that uh, was one of my favorite movies from the festivals last year. I had never even heard of this one, mm-hmm. but it sounds like not as bad as now, but something that I had to deal with a lot growing up. Just these yeah. thoughts of, oh, what if I do this and people won't like me anymore? And just like overthinking things to the point of just talking myself out of it. I still yeah. struggle with that today, but it's not as bad as when I was in like high school and college and all that. I think you'll appreciate this one. Yeah, it's a perfect one for Hidden Gems because it's one of those festival films that most people don't get a chance to see. Uh, but here it is on Hoopla for a chance for you to see it for free. Yeah, and uh, there was, and looking at the cast list, uh, one of the actors is named Dennis Bautzikaris, who is actually Rick's, Rich Swikert in one of my favorite TV shows going today, Better Call Saul. So oh. it'll be nice to see him. I think he plays her boss so he's kind of a jerk but but he does a good job <laughs> i mean rich swiker does have a bit of that in him so i don't think that was much of a stretch for old Dennis. so what is your next pick so my last choice is a bbc series 
And this is not House of Cards with Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright. This is the British original version of the House of Cards. Uh, and if you've seen the Netflix show, then it's pretty much this. Uh, instead of Francis Underwood, it's Francis Urquhart. And instead of the US Congress, it's the House of Parliament. And basically, like I said, if you saw the Netflix show, then it's pretty much the same structure as that. Urquhart is like, he's the whip. He basically tries to get support around his party. But at the same time, he secretly wants to be prime minister and will literally do anything to get it. All while talking to one person and then breaking the fourth wall and saying, this guy's a friggin' idiot. And then going back to talking to the guy who he just called an idiot to us. Uh, I honestly think that there are parts of this show that I actually like a lot more than more than the Netflix series. I think that the Netflix series got a little bit too carried away with the side plots, I th especially near the end. Here, it's a pretty tight, like three series, uh, three series show, and it's not even really that long of a show. It's literally like hour episodes, and there are four of them per series because British TV is weird sometimes in that there's only like four or five episodes in one season. And I'm like, yeah. what kind of witchcraft is, is that? <laughs> but the acting is really strong, especially from Urquhart, who I cannot remember this actor's name, but he's been in a ton of stuff and he's really good. Uh, just seeing him just manipulate everything and just do this with everyone around him all for it to come just crashing down is just really satisfying. So I recommend everyone check it out. Cool. I liked the Netflix show. I mean, it's got the, unfortunately, the Kevin Spacey kind of stink on it, but it was a really well-written show. It was a good show. Yeah, that was like my favorite show for quite some time because I was just so like entranced by like... Mm -hmm. Say what you will about Spacey, but he did an amazing job in that role. Like, they got that casting perfect. Like, he just nailed it every single scene, especially when he would, like, when he would talk to us. I remember exactly where I was when I watched the beginning of, or the end of season one after a death of a certain character played by Kate Mara, if you know, you know. And he's in the mirror and and then actually, no, this actually wasn't the end of season one. It was the beginning of season two. And he's getting dressed and he's doing his tie. And he's like, did you think I forgot about you? And he just turns and he looks at us. And you're like, we kind of hope you did. Like, you just scared the crap out of us with a look. Yeah. Again, the whole Spacey thing does put a cloud over the Netflix show. But for a long time, it was like the best thing going. It was like. House of Cards and Breaking Bad were like doing this in like my favorite shows going at the time. Yeah. Well, my last pick has also got politics around it, but it's a comedy. It's called Dave. And Dave uh, stars Kevin Klein, And uh, it's, it's a, basically the, the premise of the show is he plays a president lookalike who goes around and, and, you know, does like car dealerships and stuff like that. Well, the president has a stroke and uh, they want to get through to the, the next election. Uh, they don't want to have to have an emergency, uh, the vice president be put in. And so they recruit this presidential lookalike to come in, but it's kind of like a Mr. Smith goes to Washington kind of idea because he's, he's got these idealistic ideas about how things are run. And uh, he, he goes through the laws and takes, he gets rid of, uh, you know, stupid parts that are a waste of money that are for just lobbyist organizations. And he's just, uh, and people are like, what's happened to the president? And Sigourney Weaver plays the first lady and she's like, you are not like my husband. <laughs> um, and uh, it's charming. It's sweet. It's funny. It's uh, director Ivan Reitman and he, you know, is great. And I really enjoy it. And I think it even feels even more appropriate now than it did in 1993. 
Yeah, my uh, my friend uh, Jacob, who I do the Life in the Movies podcast with, he's actually doing an Ivan Reitman series on his channel, and he just uh, covered Meatballs for the first time, and he actually really liked it. And so oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to what he thinks of this one. I actually have not seen it, but just look at the cast list is impressive. Kevin Kline, Sigourney Weaver, uh, Frank Langella, who would play a president himself later in Frost Nixon. Uh, let's see, Ben Kingsley is the vice president. I mean, wow, like just those four names alone are impressive. True, Charles Grodin. It really does have a great, uh, great cast and uh, it's funny. Uh, and uh, I, I recommend it. I think people, even if you don't think you like politics, uh, this has an old-fashioned charm to it. So. Yeah, does, uh, does Dave end up doing a 24-hour filibuster like Mr. Smith did? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a, it's not a filibuster. I'm trying to remember. It has been a bit since I saw it, but uh, there is a big piece of legislation that he has to fight for at the end. Yeah, so... Anyway, uh, yeah, let us know what you think of these movies that we picked out on Hoopla, if you've seen any of them, and what you've been watching on Hoopla, what you think of the service. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And Ryan, how can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at RyanCam20. And there's, of course, my YouTube channel, which is just called Ryan Cam. Uh, earlier this week, I dropped my Twilight Zone episode for the week, talking about the episode called The Invaders. It was a lot of fun. Uh, on Wednesday, I dropped the next episode of Life in the Movies with Ryan and Jacob. We did a deep dive into Doctor Strange, every cameo, every like sighting, and everything in between. And it was a lot of fun doing that. I'm uh, going to be trying to cover Firestarter. It's honestly going to be a bit of a busy weekend, that being my birthday and all, but I will try and squeeze it in. I will be reviewing, and I will not fail on this, I will be reviewing Treasure Planet, since it's one of my favorite movies. It's going to drop on my actual birthday, just as like a, it's my birthday, I want to review something that I love, and Treasure Planet is something that I love. And then on Sunday... I'm going to be beginning my Jurassic Park series covering every movie leading up to Dominion. So if you haven't checked me out, please do. Cool. Yeah, you also definitely check it out. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And we are in the midst of Muppet May, and we're having a lot of fun doing that. And uh, so keep a, an eye on uh, the channel for that every Monday. Uh, next up, we have Christmas Eve on Sesame Street, which is so fun. And <laughs> so, and then also make sure you're checking out the Hallmark podcast. Lots of great stuff going on over there. Really proud of it. So take a look and uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. Five stars. That helps us so much. And if you check out the Patreon and the merch store, I've got lots of good stuff going on over there, including hashtag animation junkie shirts. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>